Today we've got a nice problem from the 2007 Austrian Math Olympiad, and it involves one of my favorite functions, the floor function. So let's see what we have. Our goal is to find all natural numbers A, B, C, D, and E, where A is bigger than B, B is bigger than C, C is bigger than D, and D is bigger than E. And of course, E is bigger than zero because we're not including zero in the natural numbers in this case. And then those numbers have to satisfy the following equation. We have the floor of A plus B over 3 squared, plus the floor of B plus C over 3 squared, plus the floor of C plus D over 3 squared, plus the floor of D plus E over 3 squared is equal to 38. Okay, so let's maybe make some opening observations first. And then after we do that, we'll dive into the meat of this solution. So let's notice that since E is a natural number, we see that that means that E is bigger than or equal to 1. But then since D is strictly bigger than E, that means that D is bigger than or equal to 2. And likewise, C is bigger than or equal to 3, um, B is bigger than or equal to 4, and A is finally bigger than or equal to 5. So this is a really trivial observation built off of the setup that we have, but nonetheless, it will be important. Next up, I'm going to introduce some new notation. I'll set capital A equal to the floor of A plus B over 3. We'll set capital B equal to the floor of B plus C over 3 capital C equal to the floor of C plus D over 3, and finally, capital D equal to the floor of D plus E over 3. And now, under that renaming of all of these parts, we see that we've got this new equation, capital A squared plus capital B squared plus capital C squared plus capital D squared equals 38, like that. So indeed, we'll start by looking at this equation. Okay, but let's make a couple of more observations before we really get off the ground. Now notice that since a is bigger than or equal to 5, and b is bigger than or equal to 4, that means a plus b is bigger than or equal to 9, but that means that 9 over 3 is bigger than or equal to 3, and thus capital A is bigger than or equal to 3. So let's maybe note that here. So let's note capital A is bigger than or equal to 3. But let's also notice that capital A must be less than or equal to 5. So it can't be 7, because if we square 7, we get 49, which is bigger than 38. It also can't be equal to 6, because if it's equal to 6, 6 squared is 36. But that means we have the sum of these three squares must be equal to 2. But since, let's see, E is bigger than or equal to 1 and D is bigger than or equal to 2, the smallest here is bigger than or equal to 1. And so that would achieve something bigger than 38. So let's maybe write that. So we have a is also less than or equal to 5. So putting this together, we see that a must come from a fairly small set, 3, 4, or 5. So that's a good piece of information. And then on top of that, we also have that b is bigger than or equal to c, which is bigger than or equal to d, which is bigger than or equal to 1. So that's also important here. Okay, so let's maybe put a little box around this so we can save that for later. Okay, now we're gonna work mod eight. And we're gonna work mod eight because the only perfect squares mod eight are zero, one, and four. So let's present that as a fact, but you can easily check that just by making a chart where you square everything mod eight. Okay, so like I said, our fact, the only perfect squares mod 8 are 0, 1, and 4. Okay, so what that means is that a squared 
b squared, c squared, and d squared must come from the set 0, 1, 4, modulo 8. So I'm abusing notation here, but I think that's okay. So in other words, a squared is either 0, 1, or 4 mod 8, b squared is 0, 1, or 4 mod 8, and so on and so forth. But now let's reduce 38 mod 8. So let's also notice that 38 is congruent to 6 modulo 8. And it's clearly congruent to 6 mod 8 because it is 6 more than 32, and 32 is a multiple of 8. But now that simplifies our problem for just a little bit. So let's notice we want to achieve the number 6 mod 8 by only adding things that are either 0, 1, or 4 mod 8. And furthermore, we can add exactly 4 of them. So in other words, we want to choose 4 terms or 4 numbers from the list 0, 1, or 4 with repetition if necessary to achieve 6 after summing them. Well, there's clearly only one way to do that. And that one way to do that is with 0 plus 1 plus 1 plus 4. So that's equal to 6. So what that tells us is that 1 of a squared, b squared, c squared, d squared is 0 mod 8. And then 2 of a squared, b squared, c squared, d squared is 1 mod 8. And finally, 1 of this list is 4 modulo 8. Okay, great. So maybe the first one to decide is which one is congruent to 1 mod 8. So let's put a yellow dot and let's talk about that down here. Or which one is 0 mod 8, I should say. Well, notice that A is 3, 4, or 5, B, C, and D are all bigger than or equal to 1. So if we achieve 0 mod 8, we can't do that by squaring 0. And since everything is less than or equal to 5, the only way to do that is by achieving 4. So that means whichever one of these, a squared, b squared, c squared, or d squared is 0 mod 8, must come from a, b, c, or d equal to 4. Not congruent to 4 mod 8, but actually equal to 4. So now, which one is equal to 4? Well, it's possible for a to be equal to 4. Is it possible for b to be equal to 4? Well, let's notice if b is equal to 4, well, that means a is not allowed to be 4, because that means that two of these would be 0 mod 8. But a has to be bigger than or equal to b, so that means a has to be equal to 5. But very quickly, we see that a squared plus b squared is too large. So in other words, it's impossible for b to be equal to 4. So that means that in fact, yes, a must be equal to the number 4. Okay, so that's good. We've got that taken care of. But now plugging this value of capital A into our orange boxed equation will give us a simpler equation to solve. Notice now we have b squared plus c squared plus d squared is equal to 38 minus 4 squared, but that's equal to 22. And now we can just, by exhaustion, check all of the perfect squares smaller than 22 and look at the ways to add three of them together in this non-decreasing way so that we achieve 22. So, like I said, by exhaustion, we can check that the only way to achieve this is with b equals c equals 3 and then with d equals 2. Okay, so that's good news. So now let's maybe start our next board with this equation a is equal to 4, b and c are equal to 3, and d is equal to 2, but in the language of our original description of a, b, c, and d. So this is where we ended up. 
the floor of a plus b over three was equal to four, then we had these two that were equal to three, and finally the floor of d plus e over three was equal to two. But now let's take each of these floor equations and translate them into inequalities. So what will that leave us with? So we'll have uh, a plus b over three must be bigger than or equal to four, but strictly less than five. Furthermore, b plus c over three must be bigger than or equal to three, but strictly less than four. The same thing for c plus d over three. So bigger than or equal to three, strictly less than four, and d plus e over three has to be strictly bigger than or equal to two, but less than three. Okay, but now we can get the fractions out of this situation just by multiplying everything by three. That gives us something that's a little bit nicer to work with. So we have 12 is less than or equal to a plus b, which is strictly less than 15. We have nine is less than or equal to b plus c, which is strictly less than 12. We have the same thing for c plus d. And then finally, we have six is less than or equal to d plus e, which is strictly less than nine. But now we can actually quickly make a simplification here. We know that a, b, c, and d, and e are natural numbers. So that means a plus b, b plus c, so on and so forth are also natural numbers. So if you've got a natural number strictly less than 15, that means it's in fact less than or equal to 14. And likewise, for the strictly less than 12, we, has, we have less than or equal to 11. And for the strictly less than nine, we have less than or equal to eight. So that makes it a little bit simpler. Okay, so next up, I wanna focus on this, these center two inequalities here, which I'll box in this magenta. And I'd like to maybe simplify them a little bit. So let's take this magenta boxed equation along with the following observation. So maybe I'll just put plus the following observation. And that is that B is strictly bigger than C, which is strictly bigger than D. But take those, taking those strict inequalities and turning them into non-strict inequalities, that means that B is bigger than or equal to D plus two. That's because if C is strictly bigger than D, C is bigger than or equal to D plus one because we're in the natural numbers and then you just do that one more time. Okay, so now this magenta box along with this green box gives us this nice simplifying effect. And we can do this by kind of increasing our inequality or maybe extending our inequality. So let's start with 11, and notice that 11 is less than or equal to c plus d plus two. And that's just from taking this second inequality and adding two to the first two parts of it. But c plus d plus two, based off of this line right here, is less than or equal to b plus c, but b plus c is less than or equal to 11. So what did we just do? We pinned b plus c between 11 and 11. And maybe likewise, we also pinned c plus d plus two between 11 and 11. But that gives us a nice system of equations. We have b plus c is equal to 11, and c plus d plus two is also equal to 11. So let's start by focusing on this b plus c being equal to 11. That gives us a couple of possibilities. We have b equals six and c equals five. We also have b equals seven and c equals four and b equals eight and c equals three. You might say, well, what about like b equals nine and c equals two? Well, that one's not possible by this observation over here that c has to be bigger than or equal to three. Then you might say, well, what about this possibility right here where b is equal to seven? Well, let's notice if b is equal to seven, then a is bigger than or equal to eight, but seven plus eight is 15, 
but that's outside of this range from 12 to 14. So those two arguments tell us that this purple box stuff is actually impossible. But that's good news because now we know that B must be equal to six and C must be equal to five. But then plugging this into this C plus D plus two equation tells us that in fact D has to be equal to four. So we get lowercase d is equal to four. Okay, so now let's take those. We know the values of B, C, and D. There are four, five, and six, or six, five, and four, depending on how you're reading them. And now let's take these and plug them into the remaining inequalities that we haven't used so much. So let's maybe say we're combining these two things which I've boxed in blue. But that like immediately gives us that six is less than or equal to a, which is less than or equal to seven, which means that a comes from the set six, seven. And it also tells us that e is between two and three. So I won't work through those details. That's really just plugging those into these inequalities, given the fact that we know what b and d are. But that means that e comes from the set two and three. Then you might say, well, can we have both possibilities? A is equal to six and A is equal to seven or E is equal to two and E is equal to three. And yes, in fact, every remaining possibility works. And so you can check that. I'll leave that for you to check all of those details, but that gives us four total solutions. And so we get those four total solutions by choosing one number from this list, six, seven, and then we're forced to have B is equal to six, C is equal to five, D is equal to four, and then one number from the list, um, two comma three, four E. So if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. And if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you'd like to help the channel out more, you could think about joining our Patreon. There's a link in the description. And that's a good place to stop.